Do you have trouble focusing? Do you tend to be hyperactive, distracted, or bouncing from one creative idea to another on a whim? If any of this sounds familiar, you're going to get a lot out of this conversation. This is the 5 a.m. Miracle, episode number 532, The Impact of Adult ADHD on High Achievers, with Dave Delaney. Good morning, and welcome to the 5 a.m. Miracle. I am Jeff Sanders, and this is the podcast dedicated to dominating your day before breakfast. My goal is to help you bounce out of bed with enthusiasm create powerful, lifelong habits, and tackle your grandest goals with extraordinary energy. In the episode this week, I interview Dave Delaney. Dave is a communication coach, consultant, author, and keynote speaker at his company, futureforth.com. Dave is also a podcaster, and his new show, ADHD Wise Squirrels, is designed specifically for adults with late-diagnosed ADHD. In our conversation, Dave and I discuss what ADHD is and how it impacts productivity, specifically for high achievers, how you can take a free ADHD assessment, and how getting treated can literally save your life. Let's get to it. All right, I am pumped to be back here in the 5 a.m. Miracle Studios with my friend Dave Delaney. Dave, welcome back to the show. I can't believe you got me up at 5 a.m., Jeff. (laughs) You know, you're the first guest to ever do that, or even like, really? Even attempt the idea this is a 5 a.m. discussion. That's really funny. (laughs) (laughs) I know, actually, I'm really hungry because it's past lunch. Right, right. Uh, Well, I mean, it's a very common thing for people to assume I record this show at 5 a.m., and I have never once done that. So (laughs) that's pretty funny. (laughs) Probably harder to get guests, I would imagine. Yes, yes. Unless we're in different times now, and that would be. That'd be tough. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, you were on this podcast probably three years ago ish, and back when back then we discussed communication and improv and so other things you were working on. Then, um, what has changed in your world in the last uh, three ish years? Uh, nothing much, uh, <laughs> and everything. Um, I am still doing that. I still my company is Future Forth, and we still do a lot of uh, communication training, presentations, keynotes, uh, presentation skills training, all that good stuff. And of course, improv plays a big role in that too. So I am still, uh, you know, a big uh, a big uh, uh, fan and uh, practitioner of using and teaching improv skills. However. Uh, in May, uh, I was uh, diagnosed with ADHD, and uh, a lot has changed now that I know more about myself and my operating system, so to speak, and uh, has certainly helped me focus more on the the work that I'm most excited about, which I'm here to share with you today, and also with your listeners to teach them uh, about ADHD. Um, uh, the, the, the fact that I will kick this conversation off with is that the average adult, not the average, excuse me, uh, adults with ADHD who are undiagnosed and untreated can have a less lifespan by uh, up to 13 years. So you can have up to 13 years less of a life, uh, with undiagnosed and untreated ADHD. And uh, so my passion for this topic has led me to create a new website, new resource, new podcast that I'm excited to share about, but has shifted a little bit from this passion into a bit of a mission now, because sharing this information and getting folks uh, themselves who might feel that they could have ADHD uh, diagnosed and treated um, could save some lives. So uh, that's got me pretty excited to Wow. Yeah, that, that is powerful. And it's, it's interesting about the kind of later in life diagnosis, which we can get into as well. But before we go there, can you break down the difference between like, these common terms of ADD versus ADHD? Yes. And and I should preface all our, our conversation here that I am not a doctor, nor do I play one on the internet. So <laughs> Same for me as well. Yeah, good. <laughs> that's, right, that's right. That's right. Disclaimers uh, abound here. Um, the difference actually, so ADHD, they added the H basically uh, some uh, years ago 
And so ADD and ADHD are the same thing. Um, it's, it's the same thing. They just added the H for hyperactivity, uh, uh, as part of that acronym. So if somebody, if somebody says I have ADD, they also, they have ADHD. It's just now called ADHD. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like HBO and Max. Um, (laughs) although, although I would argue that HBO and Max is probably one of the worst branding faux pas of all time. I would agree. Yeah. 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 (laughs) But if I was watching Max last night, um, you know that they're watching HBO. And so if somebody says I have ADD, they also, they have ADHD. Okay. Okay. Got it. Um, so let's go back to, to your story here a little bit then. What prompted you to, uh, to, to get the diagnosis? Where did that come from? Yeah, great question. So there's a longer version and a shorter version. Uh, I'll give you the shorter version, but we can dig in further if you like. The shorter version is that... Um, and with ADHD, I tend to ramble, of course. Um, so <laughs> I, I do, I do as also, well. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so maybe the shorter version will be the longer version. Um, what what led me to the diagnosis uh, was I was in a mastermind with two friends. One guy I know well and very well, and the other guy I didn't know very well. And one day, the three of us were meeting once a week. You know, just kind of work on our businesses together. And one day out of the blue, one of them uh, texted me and said, Hey, Dave, do you have ADHD? Uh, and I'm like, No. And he said, I think you do. Hmm. Um, and he said, I said, He said, I have ADHD. So, and I can see it in you. You should go talk to your doctor. And this wasn't a complete foreign assumption. Um, I had heard similar. Uh, similar things about myself, especially for my wife over the years, who's a school teacher. Uh, and so I did, I, I made an appointment with my doctor, uh, went to see him, went through some testing and uh, yeah, was diagnosed with ADHD. So that's kind of how I found out the, the longer version involves a 2016 uh, uh, in 2016. I actually went because also then my wife was like urging me to go. She really thought I, I had ADHD. And so in 2016, I went and saw a, uh, a therapist who was uh, uh, for a couple sessions. And um, for some reason, and I'm not sure exactly where along the line, uh, the little, uh, the, the diagnosis of my ADHD somehow got missed. <laughs> hmm. So when I received this diagnosis uh, last year, uh, I actually had been diagnosed five years uh, earlier. Okay, so this is this has not been not a surprise for you in that sense, but still new, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's one of those things. It's 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 who I've always been. H- however, I'm I've got I've gone all in on this to learn about ADHD so that I can better understand myself and. In this process, that led me to create Wise Wise Squirrels and the ADHD Wise Squirrels podcast, where I'm interviewing subject matter experts, uh, high achievers with ADHD, and I'm writing a lot about it. And uh, yeah, just sharing what I'm learning in part so that I can learn about it, but also so that other uh, folks can learn about it too. So let's back up a little more then. What does it actually mean or what's the the impact for you for having ADHD? Yeah. So there, it's multiple levels for me and uh, multiple different uh, aspects of this. So, um, you know, I mentioned rambling. Well, I, I do tend to ramble. Uh, I do tend to interrupt people when I'm talking to them. Uh, things like that, that even though I speak about communication. I've written about communication. This is like a big wheel, a big part of my wheelhouse. Um, uh, active listening, for example, is something I teach others to do. And I always joke on stage, like when I'm delivering a keynote that just, you know, I am always trying to improve my listening abilities and just ask my wife. <laughs> She'll be the first <laughs> to tell you this. Um, so what I've realized though is uh, – the, the tendencies and things that I have, the, the, the personality traits, uh, some obstacles that I face and also strengths that I have are all related to my having ADHD. Um, 
So everything from, you know, getting distracted uh, when I should be doing something else to getting hyper-focused uh, on projects where I'm working on something hours go by, like my podcast, for example, where hours go by when I'm editing my show and all that stuff. I don't eat. I'm, I'm like fully in there. And uh, that's something that people uh, misunderstand about ADHD. And that's where that H fits in, right? It's, it's, it's not just hyperactivity, but it's also like hyper focus. And so with ADHD and seeing it in myself, there are things that I don't want to do, or I don't, I'm overwhelmed by the process or that I just, yeah, I don't understand fully. And instead of doing them, I find anything else to do. And, uh, so, you know, you could call that procrastination, but with ADHD, it's almost like a wall that blocks you from doing the thing. So like, you know, uh, like taxes, for example, I don't want to do taxes. I don't like numbers. <laughs> now, if the IRS is listening, I, I will be, I have an accountant, <laughs> everything is okay. Um, but, uh, but you do get hyper-focused on the things that you're most excited about and, and that you're enjoying the most. Um, I'll give you another example. With ADHD, um, we lack dopamine. And so we try to find ways to create dopamine. And, and even unknowingly, you know, not knowing you have ADHD, like myself a, a couple of years ago here, or, um, or even early last year, when I'm de delivering presentations on stages in front of audiences or companies and doing, you know, retreats and speaking... I receive feedback from the audience in the form of laughter, you know, getting back to the improv thing, but also delivering presentations. I get so much feedback from the audience, their laughter, their nods, their applause, that that feeds my dopamine. And, and, I, and I, I, I draw energy from that. And so when I get off stage, I'm so happy. I feel great. And now I understand why I love public speaking so much because I earn, I get all that dopamine rush when I'm standing on stages, talk, uh, delivering presentations. Do you think that people with ADHD tend to be more extroverted in that sense or seeking social activity or is that more just for you? You think? I think it's, I, I think I don't know like specifically whether you're, whether ADHDers have tendencies to be more introverted or extroverted. Um, my understanding at least is that that probably doesn't play a role in it. Um, I, I think there are plenty probably of introverts who have ADHD, just like extroverts. They just find different ways to receive uh, that dopamine rush. So mm. I, my, my understanding, and again, not a scientist here, but my understanding is that uh, yeah, I don't think it really affects whether you're introverted or extroverted. So then you mentioned this idea that it affects obviously focus or procrastination. These are topics I discuss all the time on this show. In fact, as you're talking, I'm thinking I have half of these issues Dave is discussing. But from that perspective of the like the high achiever, productivity focused people, like how does ADHD affect high achievers? How does it affect like day to day ability to to get these goals accomplished? Yeah. So to understand ADHD, you have to understand that there are like two, there's kind of three different buckets. Um, there's like the inattentive ADHD -er, there's the hyperactive ADHD -er, and then there's sort of a mix between the two. And I'm a bit of a mix between the two personally. Um, but to get things done in, in the day to day, like you, yeah, you, you have to look at like high achievers, who, you know, as the, the old cliche of thinking outside of the box, ADHDers very, like very often think outside the box. They are like, if you have ADHD, you are 60 to 80% more likely to have entrepreneurial intentions mm. and, a, and nearly a hundred percent more likely to start a company or a business. Wow. Um, yeah. And then, and then also with creatives as well. So entrepreneurs, creatives, ADHD is quite uh, is quite common. And so even businesses and companies, you look at like, uh, like uh, Richard Branson is a great example of an ADHD -er who, you know, obviously started Virgin, but like you look at, 
you know, JetBlue or Ikea, um, you know, there, I mean, there's a you know, Microsoft, uh, uh, you know, all these different big brands that have been started uh, by people who have uh, ADHD. So it, it gets you hyper-focused on ideas and you can just build the thing, uh, you know, really quickly, like I did with Why Squirrels. Like when I speak to ADHD coaches or ADHD experts, doctors on my podcast, uh, they always laugh. At, at the story of me just starting Why Squirrels instantly because I was like, oh, I need to share everything I'm learning instantly, <laughs> right? So <laughs> I started the website and then I started the podcast because, you know, I've been podcasting uh, on and off since 05. Um, and so just, you know, jumping in full steam ahead, that's very much an adhd -er, uh type of thing to do. And so with entrepreneurship and creatives, I mean, they just get the canvas out and start painting or they buy the domain name and then, you know, start designing the website. Um, so, yeah. So I, I, did that answer your question there? Yeah, I think it's really interesting that there's so much of a of an overlap between creativity, starting businesses. I mean, I, the people that, you know, you and I know a lot of the same people. And I feel as though yeah. there are a lot of people in the, you know, the podcasting space, YouTubers, entrepreneurs who... Yeah, I think of them as creatives and go-getters and kind of the like they won't sit still kind of people. Like they're just busybodies, yeah. but it's it's productive. But they're just, you know, it's always go, go, go all the time. And I'm I'm, you know, half of me thinks like there's just too much caffeine is being included. The other half of me thinks like it, there's a natural desire happening there to, to want to be always seeking these kinds of creative outlets. And it sounds like that's a very strong like ADHD tendency is to to have that creative uh, spirit. It sounds like an asset. Uh, is, am I wrong there? Or is that, does it backfire in any way to have that much creativity? Uh, it doesn't necessarily backfire. I mean, I think you're right. It is an asset. You know, so some people uh, will, will say that ADHD is like a superpower. Um, mm. Yeah. Some people, uh, uh, you know, really support that statement. Other, others, yeah, maybe not as much. I think the the key thing with ADHD is that you need to get treatment um, and understand it fully in order to kind of, uh, uh, so like, for example, I, I'm seeing an ADHD coach who helps me with my executive functioning skills and, and helps me with staying on task and things like that. And then I also am seeing a therapist who uh, has prescribed me, you know, stimulants and who I'm, uh, is also, we're, we're going through uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT to help me, uh, with, you know, processing and, and just, just getting a grasp of all this. So, you know, to your question, it can be a big plus in, in, but the, the, the problem is that you can end up a starving artist if you're just creating the, the content, but never selling anything, for example, right. Or, mm -hmm. or shipping as, uh, as Steve jobs said, and Seth Godin said, so that's where it can get, it can get challenging, right. Like where you can get hyper-focused on the wrong things, um, and not focused enough in the areas where, you know, you need to be focused. So, but to your question, like there's a lot of, a lot of superpower strengths, right. There's, you know, and I have a presentation I do called the root down. Um, which is a process, uh, to, uh, and I, and I, this is for anybody, but it's about, it's about knowing yourself and understanding yourself. It's about respecting yourself. And that includes self-love and self-acceptance. And then about connecting yourself and finding people, finding your community and so forth. Um, and, but I mentioned that because in that presentation, I talk about some of the ADHD benefits. So like creativity, um, energetic and enthusiastic, hyper-focus, uh, you take risks, um, you have an entrepreneurial spirit, you're, uh, what else? Like quick, get problem solving, you're empathetic and sensitive. ADHDers tend to be really great people, uh, very charismatic, um, good hearts, innovative, you know, things like that. I'm curious about this question you mentioned or the statement at the beginning about the, the shortened lifespan. And then also yes. you mentioned the, the treatment that you're doing, you're seeing a coach and a therapist. Um, maybe mm -hmm. the obvious answer to my next question is like, are you glad you discovered that you got the diagnosis as an adult, as opposed to not being diagnosed? I guess let's, let's start with the easy one there. Like what would life be like without a diagnosis for you now? Do you think? Yeah, that's a great, great question. So, you know, I've, I've been working for myself for 12 years and I've had ups and downs like all entrepreneurs, of course, um, and, and solo practitioners. 
And no, yes, the, the long, uh, the short answer to your question is absolutely yes. I'm very, very glad. Um, to answer your question about uh, about um, the lifespan question, so there's a meta analysis done by Dr. Richard Barkley, and Richard Barkley is is uh, now retired, but he has a really great YouTube channel, and he's still very active in passionate about the topic of ADHD, um, really an authority in the space and, uh, haven't met him personally, but he's just a seems seems like a great guy. And he found that this statistic of, of, you know, up to 13 years less. And the reasons why, um, can amount to different things. Like for example, um, you know, I mentioned risk taking, right. Um, that can be a benefit in starting a business, taking a risk. Um, but it can also, uh, it could also affect you driving in your car, seeing the light turn yellow and hitting the gas so that you can get through it before it turns red, noticing that people are crossing the road or that there's other traffic, but just taking the risk, right? Mm. That's, uh, that can affect things, right? So that can, that can be part of, uh, this statistic of, of, of people that, that can die because of these poor, uh, choices, uh, that we make. Um, you mentioned coffee and addiction is another big part of ADHD. Again, back to that dopamine thing where we are looking for ways, uh, we are looking for ways to, to get that dopamine, to get that rush. And, and also, we tend to be more excessive uh, a lot of the time. And so without treatment, uh, you're left to your own devices to manage that how you can. Now, I took a lot, of, I made a lot of choices personally in 2020 uh, when the world was imploding. Uh, and then, you know, you include a, a tornado that destroyed my kid's school and, mm. a, and a derecho straight line windstorm that, that kicked us out of our house for three months while we, you know, I had to deal with contractors and insurance and all that. Um, also, my business as a, as a as a speaker and a coach, uh, we're sort of down the toilet for a while there because you know COVID. Um, so with all that stress, um, again, this is pre diagnosis, but I started taking mindfulness and meditation much more seriously, and I started a daily practice. I started exercising more. I quit drinking um, and. Uh, so I haven't had a drink in nearly four years. Um, but I bring that point up because with ADHD, um, you can be a little excessive or a lot. And so that could be good and bad, right? So, so with the bad thing and life expectancy that can include addiction to, to alcohol or tobacco or drugs of some sort. And that can also obviously go to bad places. Same with excessive eating, um, and then, you know, obviously that affects your, your overall, uh, health and longevity. So, um, so all these things play a role in, uh, in ADHD. Do you think that your choices to do things like meditate more and stop drinking, are, are, like, I guess the health focus aspect of that, how has that impacted ADHD for you in terms of uh, like focus? Like, do you th think that you're doing like better on a day-to-day -day basis because you have your healthy practices in place? hundred percent. Yes. And, and with stopping drinking, I mean, first of all, um, you know, I sleep better. Uh, I wake up better. Um, you know, I'm over 50 now. And at that point, you know, even having a couple of beers, uh, your hangover can last <laughs> days, uh, <laughs> or longer. So, uh, yeah, so I'm feeling very, very healthy that way. And obviously, I'm also trying to to leave a good impression on my kids, uh, or make a good impression to them uh, that you know I'm uh, unlike my my parents, or especially my dad who drank like a fish. Um, uh, yeah, so I feel I feel like quitting drinking definitely has been great. Uh, mindfulness and meditation is something that I read about, I, I practice every day. Something I'm always trying to improve. Um, it's part of the root down presentation. It's part of, it will be in my, my book on the topic as well. Um, mindfulness and meditation has just been huge for me and doing these things before the diagnosis certainly helped, uh, rather than, you know, making these life changes after a diagnosis. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just being in the moment 
and slowing down and, uh, uh, you know, being, uh, you know, less mindless <laughs> and more, <laughs> and more mindful, uh, has been, has been huge. Yeah, I mean, along those lines, if like, do you have specific strategies? I guess you know, meditation may be one of those uh, that you incorporate throughout the day to like maybe catch yourself the moment of, oh, I'm too distracted now. Let me pivot back. Like, do you have a certain way to say like, I'm going to mitigate my tendencies to get back on track? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, and I still do get off track. Uh, absolutely, you know, certainly, and, and I think everybody does. Um, but some other ways, like especially with ADHD is, you know, you, you, as I mentioned, you get hyper-focused, you do run out of steam after a while. Uh, and, and rather than to keep kind of pushing through, um, I'll just change gears and I'll give myself permission to go take the dog for a walk, get out of the house. I work from home. So, uh, or talking to a friend, um, you know, anything like that, that just, uh, I, I give myself permission to, to take breaks, um, I also give myself grace because now I understand why I am the way I am. And so knowing, knowing that I have ADHD, uh, helps me give myself permission to, to take those breaks. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I'll get distracted on things. I do have like, um, different strategies, like, um, I'll use a timer, uh, like, on, like if you use Google Chrome, for example, a lot of things too with ADHD, and a lot of this is relevant, regardless of whether you have ADHD, by the way. But, you know, sometimes digital solutions work really well. Sometimes analog do. Um, so so what's key is like finding what works best for you. Uh, for me, I'll use like I'll open up a Chrome browser. If you Google 30 minute timer, um, lo and behold, Google has uh, figured out how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> right. So there's a 30 second timer and I work with a couple of monitors. So I make that my main screen on once or not my main, my side screen. And then my main one, I work on that task. So I've got a 30 minute clock uh, counting down for me to get the thing done. And that I find has been very helpful. Also, especially with ADHD setting goals. And, and this is relevant to anybody, even if you like, if you're working, uh, you know, if you have a job somewhere or you're a student, it's very important, or if you manage team members with ADHD, it's very important to set uh, deadlines to say like, this needs to be done by this date or, you know, this day of the week or this time. Um, having these strict dates and times, even if they're, even if you just set them uh, for something you're working on rather than just work on something, um, setting these dates, uh, will help you stay focused and to try to hit those, those targets. Um, so that's also really important uh, and really is helpful. So, so as I said, like count, like a timer using your phone, there's other, like the Pomodoro uh, method, which I expect you've probably covered here <laughs> maybe, or have you? I have covered it. I'm not a personal fan of it, but I know people okay. who love it. So yeah, it works the other way. Right. And again, I mean, it really is, finding what works best for you, but just finding something that works for you. So I write a lot of, a, a lot on why squirrels.com about these different, uh, solutions or, or ways to try like the, the, uh, I just wrote recently about the Eisenhower method of, you know, uh, delegating tasks or the Pomodoro method. And whether that's an actual like tomato kitchen timer that you buy or whether it's using their app or whether it's just setting like you know, 20, 25 minute timer. Um, again, it's just finding what works best for you uh, is key. Yeah, it sounds like this is the kind of of uh, it sounds like a big lifestyle shift in many ways, but it also sounds so familiar to me because half what you just said are things that like I've been teaching here since day one on this podcast. I think in large part because I find myself distracted by things and I have to set deadlines. I've got blocks. I've got apps for everything to, to rein myself in, mostly because yeah. I feel like I'm trying to do too much in any given day. And it's all about sure. filtering and simplification. But like, there seems to be a lot of overlap here between just general productivity and 
strategies you're incorporating to uh, kind of get to where your your ideal flow for the day, I guess you could say. Like, do you find yeah. that that tends to be true for you? That productivity is just, I guess, a, a big focus in that sense. Oh yeah, it absolutely is, and it's interesting too because I think a lot. Like I wrote a book somehow. I don't know really how I was able to do it, but I wrote a, a published book, New Business Networking. And when I wrote that book about networking, I wrote it before, you know, way before I had been diagnosed with ADHD. So in a way, it's kind of a miracle I actually even wrote that book. <laughs> um, but but I say that because a lot of what I've thought about and written about over the years about you know productivity or anything else with digital marketing, networking, uh, communication skills, presentation skills, all that, so much of it plays... So much of it is relevant to everybody, but so what I've learned that works for me and the stuff that I've written about over the years that works well for me, works well for me because, especially because of the ADHD and especially because it was undiagnosed at the time. Um, so, you know, I do, I do encourage, you know, your listeners to, to, you know, we have, I have a uh, ADHD. It's a free test at wisequirrels.com. I don't see the answers. I don't see the outcomes, but you can try it there um, just to see. Um, but the most important thing, regardless of what the outcome of that test is, the, the most important thing is speaking to your doctor, um, you know, uh, about whether to, to see if you have ADHD. Um, uh, by the way, a, a common misconception and something I hear a lot is uh, people will say something to the effect of like, oh, we're all ADHD sometimes <laughs> or ADD sometimes or what have you. That's completely wrong. Um, you either have ADHD or you don't. Um, uh, it's almost like being left-handed, right? Mm. We're all, well, you know, it's not like you're born with ADHD. There's, there's um, some exceptions to developing ADHD, which involve like, and I, I'm not, again, not an expert, but my understanding is it involves like maybe possibly like head trauma or, uh, you know, uh, uh, poisoning, like lead poisoning, things like that. Um, but, but fully, you know, what I understand is that, you know, the majority of people who have ADHD have it, they're born with it. Um, uh, which brings up another point too. If, 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 uh, you, you or a listener has a child with ADHD, ADHD is highly hereditary. Mm. Um, so there's like an 80% chance. The, the numbers change slightly based on the, the, the gender or the mother or the father. But um, I believe it's around 80% chance that one of the parents has also has ADHD if a, if a child has ADHD. And so a lot of times people discover adults. And again, why squirrels is for adults with ADHD, um, late diagnosed adults with ADHD like myself. Um, but a lot of people discover they have ADHD when they get their kids, you know, they're, they're, they're seeing doctors, they're trying to get down to why their kids are challenged at school or behaviorally and so on. And as they learn about ADHD from the doctors, they, they, they suddenly realize, wait a minute, uh, yeah, this, this is all sounding very familiar to me. Mm. Um, and so a lot of adults find that they discover their own ADHD when, uh, when receiving treatment for their kids. Um, and another side of this too, is that, um, ADHD w was known back in the day as like a naughty, naughty boy syndrome. Um, I very much fit that bill <laughs> as, a, <laughs> as, as a kid in school. And, it was never really thought as something that could affect girls or perhaps because of, you know, sexism or what have you, but girls just weren't really diagnosed as much. The, the hyperactivity shows up very clearly in a lot of boys because they're bouncing off the room, they're running around, they're hard to, you know, contain where the girls uh, are more hyperactive in their minds. They're, they're playing mm. with their hair. They're looking outside the window. They're not focused on the work. Their minds are, are, are hyperactive. And so, and again, there's crossover of course, between genders and so forth. But um, so girls were missed a lot. So a lot more women now are discovering and being uh, diagnosed with ADHD uh, even than men, because they're now realizing, Oh, wait a minute, <laughs> <laughs> this is me. So um so yeah, it's 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 really interesting to learn about. 
Yeah, I, I saw a, uh, a, this is solely separate, but I saw a comedy sketch recently of this comedian who discovered he had autism because his son, he thought his son might have autism, but actually he did himself, not his son. And I think it's interesting, <laughs> it's fascinating because you think about, like I have you know two young girls, and when do they go to the doctor for their annual checkups, there's all these questions to answer about their behavior and their, their tendencies. And I keep thinking through myself through the same lenses, like, do I do these things? Like, is this true about me? And half yeah. it might be. And it's just, it's interesting how much we learn about ourselves through our kids. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's totally true. And also, you know, for, for myself, you know, um, uh, uh, not to, to bore you with the, the gory backstory, but my, my dad and I had a pretty challenged, uh, strained relationship when I was younger. Um, now luckily this got much better as we both got older. Um, and he's no longer around. Uh, so I can say whatever I want about him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I raised that because now knowing what I know about ADHD and, and, and the, the, the likeliness of, of how hereditary it is, I have no doubt my dad had ADHD mm. uh, and uh, like all the, all the symptoms, all the traits uh, are in, were, were definitely in my dad. So uh, it also helps with a little bit of, uh, you know, getting back to that self-understanding uh, and self-acceptance, um, you know, if you can understand yourself better, you can communicate this better to, to your family, to your friends. Um, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll open conversations sometimes now with friends and be like, Hey, don't forget I have ADHD here. So, <laughs> you know, if I ramble on, just tell me to shut up, Dave. Uh, you know, um, but, uh, yeah, so it, it helps with being more empathetic and being a better human as well. Do you have like a, a community of people that you are like, like other people with ADHD that you learn from or hang out with? Or is that, like, is that not really a thing? I'm, I don't really know the adult ADHD yeah. community. I'm just, you know, curious about that part. Yeah, no, it's a great question. And it gets into that, that third section of the root down, which is about connecting yourself, right? Like finding the others. And, uh, uh, yeah, so there's, there's, there's a wonderful organization. Actually, there's two, there's one called ADA. Uh, which unfortunately don't include the H in their name because they've been around that long. Um, and the other is Chad. Um, and both of those groups um, have uh, like an online community that you pay. Like it's very, they're both nonprofits. So you pay like, I don't know, I think, I think I pay like 10 bucks a month to be a member. Um, and there's a lot of forums. And, uh, so you can interact with other folks. Um, uh there's Reddit, of course. There's uh, TikTok and places where you can find a lot of content. Um, you just have to be careful about the, the information you're finding to make sure that it's not uh, misinformation um, or, or misunderstandings or, or, you know, hopefully not disinformation about ADHD. But, you know, during the uh, during 2020, during the pandemic, uh, ADHD diagnosis, uh, diagnoses, uh, began to spike. And the reason why wasn't because more people, more people were, you know, quote unquote, getting ADHD. It was, it was because people were spending more time online. They were stressed out. They were seeking therapy and, and those therapists, this is what happened to me. Part of what, what my story, like in 2020, because of the stress and anxiety, I started seeing an online therapist. And the therapist diagnosed me with, you know, kind of low grade depression and much higher on, on, uh, anxiety. And however, it was a therapist and not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. So she, she gave me some, some things to consider and to do, but she couldn't, um, she couldn't diagnose me and like prescribe medication or anything like that. And, uh, one, one very important point and getting back to um, life expectancy with ADHD that's untreated is that there's comorbidities of ADHD. And these are like th th things that are caused by ADHD. And some of these things include uh, uh, depression, um, anxiety. So what happens a lot of the time and, and you know, Richard uh, Barkley does a great job uh, this is also, if you go to wisegirls.com slash life, um, I have more information about this and that video from him is there. Um, but, but I share this because what happens is uh, you get treated by therapists or doctors for the anxiety, but not for the ADHD. It gets mm -hmm. missed. 
And so then what happens is the, the patient, they can't, or, or maybe you're seeing somebody like a, like a, uh, like a, a trainer to get more in shape or to stop overeating, you know, all these different things that you're not being treated for the root cause. And so ultimately what happens is, is not always, but what can happen is you, you fail at, at your attempt at treating your anxiety, for example. Um, and without treating the root cause and understanding the root cause, which could be ADHD, this by the way, doesn't mean that if somebody is experiencing anxiety or is, is diagnosed with anxiety, this doesn't mean that you have ADHD. Um, you may just have anxiety, um, which onto itself is also, you know, a serious thing, but ADHD is at the root of a lot of these, a lot of these, uh, conditions. And so, you know, you need to start there and then, and then, uh, work on that other, other stuff. And what happens is, you know, if left untreated, like, you know, yeah, that anxiety can, you know, suicide rates can be higher, you know, things like that. Hmm. Way to bring the conversation down, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it's real though. And this is an interesting uh, component because I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, the world of high achievers and productivity and goal achieving, you know, the world that I've been in with this podcast since day one, I mean, there's a, a mm. strong correlation between those kinds of people and just extreme behavior in general. Right. The go getters and the high achievers are doing things at a high level. But that I've seen it myself, like if I'm really excited, I can all of a sudden get really angry, like really fast. And so the heightened yeah. emotion is it's all connected. And I feel like it's, it's an interesting overlap of people who, you know, know and of themselves, like I've got ADHD, but that means I'm maybe more prone to these certain types of behaviors. That that self awareness is incredible because then you can actually do something about it. And I love the the action orientedness of saying like I have a, a, a plan to to work on this. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and that's the thing. So as I mentioned, like the root down this presentation that I've developed, um, and really a system that that I'm I'm you know I just spoke I just delivered the root down. Uh, as a keynote, I call it my ADHD inspired uh, presentation and process to know, respect and connect yourself. But I just delivered it for the entrepreneurs organization EO uh, in San Francisco, Silicon Valley and uh, and East Bay. Um, and And the feedback was astounding because I had a room of entrepreneurs of all sorts of different, you know, businesses and industries and so forth. But I had so many great questions and comments uh, from that audience and, and the feedback I'm getting from this, whether I do it virtually or in person or companies or conferences, the, the feedback I'm getting is, is excellent. And then with the ADHD Why Squirrels podcast, I can't tell you how incredible just reading the reviews are like in, in Apple podcasts or, or, receiving the emails. I'm getting so many emails from listeners who are sharing their stories and things. And it's, it's just really, really incredible. And and that gets back to that point about this, this all being such a, a passion of mine that is quickly shifted to this mission of, uh, of really trying to, to educate folks, uh, to remove stigmas, to help educate people about ADHD and again, like the root down is, you know, the stuff that I share, the steps to do in that, in that process, they're for anyone, like anybody can, can do this stuff, but it's especially uh, helpful for ADHDers. Well, this is awesome stuff, Dave. I, I love, I love this conversation. I've never discussed this on the yeah. podcast before. And I feel like there is, this is a whole new world of possibility for people, especially high achievers and, you know, productivity uh, people just like us who that may, maybe need this kind of, a, of awareness. So from that perspective, if somebody wants to learn more from you, wants to take the assessment you mentioned earlier, like where can they go to really dig into your content here? Yeah, thanks. And thanks for having me. This is, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, uh, yeah, everybody could go, you can go to wise squirrels.com. Um, if you Google Dave Delaney, you can find me in all the places, but I encourage you to, to visit wise squirrels.com. Um, that's where you'll find the podcast, the, uh, the free assessment, uh, articles and, uh, and a lot more. Excellent. That's great stuff. Dave, this has been awesome, man. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. It's been fun. Hey, 
in for the action step this week. Take the free ADHD assessment. Just simply go to jeffsanders.com slash ADHD. And of course, subscribe to Dave Delaney's podcast, ADHD Wise Squirrels, which you can find wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, of course, subscribe to this podcast in your favorite podcast app or become a VIP member of the 5 a.m. Miracle community by getting the premium ad-free version with exclusive bonus episodes at 5ammiraclepremium.com. That's all I've got for you here on the 5 a.m. Miracle podcast this week. Until next time, you have the power to change your life. And all that fun begins bright and early.